Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here with James Jacob Prash live in uh, England via Skype. Jacob, uh, one of the believers had a very interesting question. With the rise of homosexuality, is it any wonder that there are people who are now trying to lower the sexual age of consent uh, with, with uh, young people? What does scripture and history teach about this? Not surprisingly, it was a woman called Edwina Curry who had been a member of the British cabinet and a member of the British parliament, who was fired for incompetence as health minister. It was widely reported in the British press that she had an extramarital affair with former prime minister, John Major. Anyway, she was fired for incompetence as a health minister, so she began writing a book about sex scandals in parliament. She had <laughs> a story, almost a fiction. Um, or a docufiction, a fiction based on what really goes on in the immoral corridors of power of Great Britain. Uh, Congress would be no different, I assure you, or any other government. Nonetheless, this was at Weena Curry, and her signature piece of legislation was to reduce the age of homosexual consent to 16. So a 45 or 55 year old homosexual male could seduce a 16-year-old boy from a family where he had no father figure, an absent father, he was vulnerable, he was having gender identity issues in early adolescence, and by the age of 16 he was ripe for the picking. Mrs. Curry wanted to do that, Edwina Curry. And she was a conservative, a Tory. Um, there's no more conservative party in Great Britain since Margaret Thatcher. The traditional conservative party, unfortunately, no longer exists. Nonetheless, there may be individuals who are conservative, but the party as a conservative party is not there. This was in Great Britain. Well, over the years, if something happens in Britain, it tends to happen in America. Homosexuality was decriminalized in Britain before it was in the United States. The precedent was set. Uh, we've had members of the U.S. Supreme Court justices citing foreign precedent and foreign juridical decisions and guiding their own decision in order to basically rewrite the Constitution away from the intent of the Founding Fathers. One of the most wicked and despicable people who's ever done this, a wicked, wicked woman, was Ronald Reagan's appointee to the U.S. Supreme Court, Sandra Day O'Connor. She outlawed the Kansas sodomy laws, and she was a pro-abortion judge who Ronald Reagan appointed to be Supreme Court Justice after he lied to Christian America saying he was pro-life, he appointed this woman who was pro-death, pro-abortion, and she wrote that decision on the Texas anti-sodomy laws, which opened the door for same-sex marriage nationally, an avalanche of it. It was also Sandra Day O'Connor who wrote the court's decision on outlawing the Ten Commandments from the Judiciary Building in Alabama. She's a wicked, wicked woman. How a woman like that would ever become a Christian and not go to hell? Well, the Lord can save her, but it's not likely. She's a wicked, wicked woman. She's a true daughter of Satan. And uh, a pet, political pet of Ronald Reagan. It shows you what Reagan really was, just a politician. Um, he just lied through his teeth about this very issue of abortion, but then it became homosexuality with his appointees. That judge in California... Republican homosexual judge who outlawed Proposition 8 against the democratic will of the people of the state of California. He was nominated to the bench by Ronald Reagan and appointed by George Bush. So it's not something just coming from the political left or people like the Clintons or Obama or people who you would think. In both Britain and America, it's come from people falsely pretending to be conservative. The Republican Party in the United States, uh, certainly the Bushes and Reagan, and also uh, the so-called Tory or Conservative Party in Great Britain. Nations get the leaders they deserve. They also get the pastors and preachers and theologians they deserve. The reason you have that kind of people in government is because that's the kind of people you're getting increasingly in the church. People like Tony Campolo with Steve Chalk in Britain caving in on the homosexuality issue and going for the youth. 
if you speak to a homosexual male who's been or a lesbian who's been saved, who was born again, and the Lord delivered them from that, and you listen to their testimony, almost inevitably, I would just about say just about inevitably, there may be the very odd exception, but I never heard of an exception. They all have the same kind of testimony. They had an absent or missing father figure, or a lesbian, an absent or missing mother figure. Mommy became daddy, and daddy became mommy. And as they came into early adolescence, they had a confused identity issue. That is what, what, what happened to them. Um, and they're vulnerable at that particular age. Hence, at the age of vulnerability is the age of primary seduction. You want to get to them when they're as young as possible to get them into that lifestyle. And that is what is happening. Now, when the world does it, I expect it. When, when a politician like Ronald Reagan lies, I wouldn't expect Ronald Reagan, if had he been alive, to do anything other than lie. He's a politician. You know, he's, he's, he, was, he was a grade B Hollywood actor who co-starred to a monkey uh, who was hired by the Republican Party establishment to play the role of a conservative. That's all he was. He was no conservative. And he was certainly no social conservative. He appointed O'Connor. He appointed that judge in California. He did a lot of things like that. Uh, again, these are politicians. They, they, when politicians lie, they do what you expect politicians to do. Politicians lie like dancers dance. That's what they do. It's their job. But when it gets into the church, we have an issue. When it gets into the body of Christ, we have a serious, serious issue. Now you have believers wanting to lower the age of consent and others just refusing to speak about it. One of the most deviously sick and twisted so-called pastors in the world, Lynn <coughs> of Hillsong, he's as deranged as the Houstons are in Australia. Lynn refused to speak to the homosexuality issue. And the way he perverted scripture out of context to justify not speaking to it was sickening. Now he, he hosted that fiasco where Jesus came out in female drag uh, dressed as the Statue of Liberty where instead of a crown of thorns he had the crown of Lady Liberty came out like Lady Liberty and they were singing New York, New York to him and then they had the naked cowboy with cowboy boots, a cowboy hat and a big guitar dancing on a stage and, and a couple of thousand of Christian women clapping and then the naked cowboy, the role was played by the church at Carl Lynn's youth minister. And uh, Bobby Houston, of course, was the keynote speaker. This, this is the kind of sick perversion you have in Hillsong. Hillsong is typical of the way that this whole thing is going uh, with the homosexuality at out and all the rest of it. Uh, yes, I would again point you to our recording entitled, Not Even a Minyan, Not Even a Minyan. When I saw this coming, the Lord told me to begin to ex expound on this issue from the story of Lot in Genesis and how it foreshadows the rapture and resurrection of the coming rescue and how homosexuality will attempt and to a degree succeed to become increasingly militant and how Christians will begin to compromise with it the way Lot tried to get comfortable and coexist with it. It's on the recording, it's on the uh, YouTube, I believe. I would encourage you to watch it or listen to it. Now, in various of our teachings, we talked about how the morally debased cultural climate of the Greco-Roman Empire faced by the apostles and the early church in the first, second, and third centuries is going to be replayed eschatologically at the end of the world. Most of the Roman emperors were bisexual or homosexual. Claudius was a homosexual. Most, like, like Caligula and so forth, were bisexual, particularly the ones who persecuted Christians. Well, you're going to see this happening. A homosexual and bisexual influence of the government that's going to hate Christians and persecute Christians, like in the early church. This is going to happen. It already began to happen with Barack Obama, Satan's son, Barack Obama. That's when it began the pressure on um, evangelical chaplains in the military and so forth. I mean, he, he, again, Romans 1 tells us that people like Obama and Clinton, who literally endorsed this, it's not only the 
people given over to sexual depravity, Paul writes, it's those who give hearty approval to what they do who are going to be given over to this divine judgment. Well, you already see this with, 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 with certain politicians like Obama. Obama actually sent letters to every school on the White House letterhead in the United States threatening to withhold federal funding if they didn't allow same-sex laboratories and, and, and locker room facilities and so forth. Just a wicked, wicked man. How that man will not go to hell? Again, it's almost impossible for someone like Barack Obama not to go to hell. Uh, of course, God balks at his, his, his enemies. He balks at people like Obama, but they do their damage under the hand of Satan. Well, that's only the foreshadow of it. Homosexuals, under the guidance of Satan, will attempt to make this worse, get more influence in government like happened in the first century, and then go after Christians. Uh, that's one example. Also, violence as entertainment is another. Not violence where you have people fighting in a cause, but just violence for the sake of violence, as the Romans had with the gladiators. Well, today, again, these computer games and so forth, virtual killing, uh, it's only there to celebrate violence, not for any cause or whatever, or, was, or even uh, maybe an ostensible cause. But it's going to become that kind of cultural environment that will be morally debased, uh, and where human life will mean nothing, and there will be a hatred of Christians and an increase in homosexuality, lesbianism, and bisexuality. It will become like the early church. Historically, we have teachings explaining this, one of which is the original series on preparing for persecution. Another aspect of this is the historian Arnold Toynbee. Arnold Toynbee was truly one of the great historians of human history. And Toynbee wrote one of the signs of a civilization in decline is the proliferation of homosexuality. Historically, that's always been a sign of the decline of any society. Well, by that criteria, Western civilization is certainly in decline. Again, we need to pray for our government, and we need to pray for our church leaders, and we need to pray that the church will be prepared for coming persecution. But there will be a rescue. There will be a rapture. But things will get worse before they get better. Don't believe the pre-trib people. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Thank you, Jacob. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen. Will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. 
how the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book, and the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.